Welcome back to Tarot by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, um, this is going to be a reading on uh, Mike Johnson, the GOP, uh, their two-week vacation, and the timing of it, especially given uh, recent political events. Now, again, I've mentioned him from Intuit View multiple times on this channel. Um, fantastic uh, medium, and you can find her on her uh, channel, Intuit View. Thursday nights, or alternate Thursday nights, she does uh, a live with readers, with uh, with um, uh, audi an audience, and her husband, Adam, uh, basically is the man in the chair in the control room, sort of running, off, running the show while Kim does her thing. Somebody had asked if the timing of the vacation of the GOP was linked to Navalny's death. And I had people mention that in my comments, and I hadn't really thought about that, but it makes sense, right? Um, and Kim did a reading on it, and she says, I see him leaving to regroup. And then on Friday, she did a follow-up reading on Navalny and brought back that question. And it's like, yeah, this could be one of the reasons why they need to regroup. They got a heads up that something was happening and they needed to get out of town. And that uh, Putin is very concerned that the how expensive the war is, the economic sanctions on Russia, and if the House members were in town in Washington when Navalny's death was announced, especially after the Senate passed funding for Ukraine and that bill is sitting in Johnson's inbox ready to be taken up, that there would be incredible political pressure forcing the Republicans to address the issue. This article I'll link here from the BBC was saying that there were members of the Republican Party that were looking to um, give a counter offer for Ukrainian funding. Not obviously reducing it, but or who knows, maybe increasing it, but likely reducing it. But that there was movement afoot for a compromise. And Putin cannot have funding passed for Ukraine. That is, that's going to be the death of his military operation and probably his literal death that would soon follow it. Um, so this reading is going to look into that. Um, I The other day, uh, thank you very much for my viewers here that have jumped over to the uh, Tarot of the Seven Seas channel and subscribed. I appreciate it. I did a reading on Navalny's death and the, uh, the energy around it. Uh, tonight's reading, which goes up at 10 o'clock Pacific time. And again, I choose that time because it would be about eight in the morning in the EU so they can enjoy a reading with their coffee. <laughs> Just like you guys do with these for the non-insomniacs that aren't watching at three in the morning in New York. Um, anyways, um, tonight's reading is going to be on uh, Yulia, Navalny, <laughs> Yulia Navalny or Navalny. They had an A-Y at the end. Regardless, his wife, his widow. And uh, the energy around her, and then looking at, is she the Queen of Wands? Is she the one who's going to be leading the charge, you know, taking up her husband's mantle, his martyrdom, if you will, and then uniting the Russian people against Putin? So there's all sorts of um, connectivity here of what's going on. So again, that's going up tonight. I put a, a, a a link in the uh, the community page, and I'll put a link in the uh, description for this page as well. Okay, hang on for a second. And I'm back. My phone was ringing, <laughs> trying to figure out what it was. Um, regardless, uh, so today's reading, uh, the BBC had an article where uh, Biden was very critical of Johnson and the GOP for taking a two-week vacation. And the quote was, it's about the time they step up, don't you think? Sitting on a two-week vacation? What are you thinking? My God, it's bizarre. It is. And it doesn't make sense, right? They've got the budget they need to pass at the beginning of March, and they're taking a two-week vacation? That makes no sense. Um, years ago, years and years and years ago, um, I came upon kind of the truth for myself that if somebody told me a story or was telling me a series of stories and it wasn't making sense that I was making an assumption that wasn't correct. Sometimes the assumption is that they're telling you the truth, but I'm making an assumption that's not correct. And then if you start changing your core assumptions from what you believe into the exact opposite and then reanalyze the data, eventually you're going to hit on one of them that simplifies everything. 
And if you've hit on the one that simplifies it, that's probably where the problem is and to change that core assumption. There's a, uh, a concept called Occam's razor, which is basically the same thing. And Occam's razor basically says, um, the simplest explanation is usually the right one. So don't overcomplicate it, make it simple. It doesn't make sense that they would take a two week vacation when the budget's due. It makes no sense whatsoever. You got work to do, why would you do that? And the assumption is that, you know, that uh, it was, that they're concerned about the budget and passing it and that there was no other reason other than the budget. Okay, now you know that you've got this Ukraine legislation sitting in front of you to fund it. And what if they were told to leave as opposed to voluntarily leave? Well, that makes things simpler, right? You know, you better leave, get out of town now because they acted like they were told to get out of town. Like they got the phone call that the police raid was coming and to clear the speakeasy because that's literally what they did. It's like, okay, well, what would spur that on? Well, Russia, right? And we've certainly seen a link between the GOP and Russia since Donald Trump, even Hillary Clinton pointed it out. All roads seem to lead back to Russia. And we know Russia hacked into the RNC and DNC servers. They released the DNC information, but never the RNC information. And ever since then, the Republican Party has been all cozy with Russia, almost like they're being blackmailed. That makes sense. That simplifies things. Now they're getting the heads up to leave town. Why? Because there's a bill to fund Ukraine that's sitting on your desk. And we're about to announce that we've murdered their, an opposition leader which is gonna put pressure on you to pass this bill. And we do not want this bill passed because if this bill passes, we lose the war, I lose my life. And if I lose my life, I'm taking you mofos down with me. Does that make sense about rats fleeing the ship? It sure does. That, that simplifies things a lot. That doesn't mean it's the right answer or the true answer, but it sure explains the behaviors really, really well. Sorry, I'm seven and a half minutes into this. Let's get the reading started, shall we? Let's take a look at the energy around the Republicans fleeing Washington, led by Mike Johnson and Navalny's death. Okay? Entertainment purposes only. I would like to think the Ace of Pentacles is about the budget, <laughs> but it's not. This is about the money. This is about the things of value. This is about the control that's underneath here. This is about the Ukrainian budget and the money that's there to fund Ukraine and how that cannot pass. That budget is sitting in Johnson's inbox. Judgment. The news is coming out about the death of Alexei Navalny. There is going to be judgment already the Senate and Page of Pentacles, and you've got to do something. The messaging is there about the money. Now, the Senate has already passed funding for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan, and the folks in, in Palestine. Something for everybody. It's sitting there ready to go. And they've just murdered the opposition leader to Putin in Russia. You don't think there's going to be a crap ton of pressure to sign that thing to say, screw you to Putin? Oh, there's going to be. And that's why they got the, the, the message, get out of town now, because if you're there, you won't have any choice but to take up this money initiative and you will pass it. In the past, money, money, money. <sighs> They should be working on the budget. <laughs> the budget is due. They have every reason to be in, in United, Washington, D.C. over the next two weeks doing their job, which is passing the budget. But the Senate, they, they said they're going to tie Ukraine funding to the border deal. Well, they passed a border deal. And then Trump says, don't take the border deal because I want to run on it. Probably also taking orders from Putin. And um, they listened to Trump. They listen to those orders. In the past, they've been evaluating the money, the budgets, the um, the funding for Ukraine, how it makes them look. They've been taking political calculations on the money uh, with all of this. The current situation is the dark money. 
This is, again, Russia funneling money to the Republicans. This is a classic carrot versus stick. Russia, when they hacked into the RNC, DNC servers, hit the Democrats with a stick. And they showed the Republicans exactly what they would do to the Republicans. But instead of hitting the Republicans with a stick, they sent a bunch of money through the NRA to contribute to Republican accounts. Basically, we can be friends. You know, I'm holding this over you, but this can be a mutually beneficial relationship as opposed to a, a non-mutually beneficial relationship. And so they showed what they would do, what the, what the downside was going to be. So, you know, we can do the same thing to the, the Republicans or we can give you dark money and we can work together for our mutual interests. The Republicans chose to avoid the shame and the humiliation and the stick like the Democrats had and opted to work with Putin and Russia. And like any operation like this, they ask for little things at first. And they eat around the edges, just like Trump does. They eat around the edges of your morals and ethics. Little bits, little compromises, little things. And then they build up more and more. And the compromise builds up more and more until you are so entangled with Russia that you cannot hope to get out. Why do you think so many Republicans are not running for re-election? They didn't re run for re-election in 2020 or 2022, and there's a bunch more in 2024. Did they suddenly develop a conscience? Or are they tired of being owned and they want out because they don't want to be exposed? Entertainment purposes only. Heaven forbid we provide any innuendo whatsoever about their behaviors. Nightmare situation. Putin is in a world of hurt and he's going to make everybody around him in a world of hurt. Susan Lynn was talking on her podcast I was listening today, Saturday, about Putin being desperate and sending a message by killing Navalny that he will do whatever it takes to maintain power and he will take down anybody who stands in his way. And these Republicans who have been in this kind of, sort of, willing, unwilling relationship, they're on notice. Do what I say. Leave town. Don't you dare pass that funding because I will make your life a living hell. Now we have an integrity problem. We have a problem where the GOP looks absolutely out to lunch and they don't have their values straight if you would just assume everything's on the up and up. If you understand they're being blackmailed, if you understand they're in Russia's pocket, things make a whole lot of sense. But right now on the surface, the GOP looks like they lack integrity. And you know when you've got a budget coming in, you take a two week vacation, giving yourself two days to pass the budget, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. None. The GOP, they thought they could work with Putin, get all the good stuff, and avoid the bad stuff. You can't. That's not what happens. Outcome is the Knight of Swords. This is not going to end well for the GOP. It's almost as if the political pressure is so much that Mike Johnson has to cave and call him back in. What options does he have? I mean, this is this is now a political nightmare. Uh, well, this could be, you know, get everybody out of town fast, which is what happened. You know, run! <laughs> Not charging to save, it's charging to flee. But I also think um, that this could put political pressure on Mike Johnson to end that two-week vacation early and get people back uh back in the house. I don't know where that political pressure is going to come from. It's not going to come from Trump, who they seem to be taking their marching orders from. They don't listen to McConnell. They're not going to listen to uh, to Biden. It's almost as if, you know, you have to have a thousand people camped out in front of Mike Johnson's house screaming with pitchforks. 
screaming at him to get back there. You almost, and I hate to say it, you almost have to threaten their personal safety and because I'm not advocating for that. But I don't know how else you're going to put the political pressure on this guy. In some ways, maybe this is the news media's opportunity to um, really hammer it home and put the pressure and shame and really amp up the uh, coverage on this and get people stoked up. That'll help their ratings. That'll sell advertising. It would actually help the country. I don't know if they'll do it. Be helpful if right-wing media joined in on it. Hmm. We'll never see that. Not, not in the near future anyways. Unless Lachlan develops a conscience. I don't see that happening. All right, so that's the energy around it right now. Uh, that Knight of Swords is probably them just fleeing as fast as they can, right? in a re full retreat. Um, now that, uh, is there going to be political pressure on Mike Johnson and the Republicans to end their vacation early and get back in the House? This is wishful thinking on my part. <laughs> okay, will there be political pressure? In What's going to be the political part? What's going to be like? Will Johnson end this two-week vacation early? There's going to be an agreement. An agreement between who? If it's Johnson and Putin, that's going to be no. This could be an agreement between leaders, though. Is this an agreement here? That could be, again, that could be an agreement to stay out for two weeks because you got to two there, or that could be an agreement to come back. What's going to be crossed with? Oh, the heartbreak and betrayal. Hmm. This is a political nightmare. This is an absolute political nightmare for the GOP, especially in the House. There should be pressure coming all different directions on Mike Johnson, from Hakeem Jeffries to Chuck Schumer to um, Mitch McConnell to senior members of the Republican Party who are conservatives and not insurrectionists. They've got a job to do with the budget, and this is going to look awful. And they've got funding things underneath it. If they're going to get their story straight, they better work quickly because the American people aren't going to like it. Again, I think, though, ultimately, it's going to be the media that that pushes this because I think Johnson's just going to basically ignore everything else. In the past is the Wheel of Fortune. Fate, karma, taking chances. I think them fleeing was taking a political risk that they thought was a good political risk at the time. <coughs> because, again, of the, uh, the fallout from Navalny. I think one of the things that they're counting on here is that if they stay out for the full two weeks... When they come back, the narrative isn't going to be about passing Ukraine funding because what we've got is a government shutdown looming. So which one's more urgent? Right? Not important. Urgent. Navalny's dead. You can't do anything about that. But we've got a government shutdown coming in two days. Will they shut the government down to help delay this even further? Will they focus on the government shutdown and hope people, after three weeks of drama, forget all about the Navalny incident altogether? That's the political calculus that's going on right now. By the way, I freaking hate politics. It prevents you from doing the right thing. <laughs> Just because I hate it doesn't mean I can't understand it. I disagree with it. It angers me because I've got morals and ethics. And it's, you know, if you get rid of those, those problems of morals and ethics, then you don't have to worry about things like, oh, you know, doing the right thing and stuff like that, you know? Ah. Taking a political chance. Current situation, Ace of Pentacles. They're, yeah, because they've got budgets to pass. They've got... Uh, Funding to pass. Um, God dang, what was the question? Will they be forced to come back? Current situation, 
Money and budgets and funding is a huge, huge issue right now. The hedge, as Lena has told me, Dr. Lena Rodriguez, is you're doomed to repeat things if you don't learn the lesson. How many times have they tried to pass this budget? And they're going to have another, another opportunity to do that or kick it down the road. But they've got some money issues that they need to figure out really, really quickly. Well, they come back in two weeks. This is setting up the table. Page of Wands. There's going to be a lot of people, again, I think media, coming forward with messages, calling for action. You know, the, the weekend media, I haven't looked at like, you know, how this, well, it's not Sunday, but how the Sunday media circuit's going to go. Because you can imagine any Republican on anything other than a cozy Newsmax um, broadcast is going to be asked about the funding, about this two-week vacation before the budget's due, the Ukraine funding, the death, the killing of Navalny, and stuff like that. They, this is going to be up to the media I believe, to really put the pressure on Mike Johnson and such. The lesson to be learned is the world card. You know, the wheel of fortune is the is the uh, is what's happening. The world card brings the wheel of fortune to an end. Because if you look at the two cards, you've got the same animals in the same spots. But here they're in transition. Here they're fully developed. The world is bringing things to an end. So not only is the world watching, but I think because of everything that's going on with the money, I do believe they're going to bring this vacation to a termination. They're going to terminate it early. That's At least that's what the pressure is going to be. And that's the right thing to do. And that should be what this agreement's all about. Is that the card I really wanted in this position? It just doesn't make it easier to answer. The outcome is the Five of Swords. Winner takes all. No compromise. No quarter given. I think in the end, despite all that, they're not going to do They're just not going to do it. They are not going to come back early. All these cards lead me to believe that they would come back early. And I think Mike Johnson's just going to cross his arms across his chest and say, nope, I'm not doing it. That's what we're going to get. That's what this Republican Party is brought us. Maybe I should just ask. Uh, for Carter, will the media be doing its part to bring America <laughs> and Congress back in session? Will be they be doing their part in exposing this and pressuring the GOP to come back. Maybe that's why they don't do it. There's not enough pressure. Maybe they're willing to take the uh, the political hits here. I really want to say they're coming back early. I really did. But Five of Swords is not. That's a card of no compromise. And coming back early is a compromise, right? They're not going to come back early and say, no, we're not going to do it. You know, you, you, you're going to hide. All right. Will the media do their part? <sighs> they're looking at their options. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of looking at things and there's a, and underneath it, it's looking at things with a new perspective or sacrifice. I do think the media is going to have folks on and talking about, why are you doing this? You know, we've got, you know, this is a betrayal to the, the United States and its values. I do think they're going to say that. And, you know, are you going to give us the insight as to why you think it's okay not to be there right now? Or are you going to throw yourself on your sword? This is going to be broadcast over there. And um, they may not ask, here's the Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is emotions. You know, strong emotions. I think the left-leaning media might ask some more probing questions. The right-wing media is not even going to talk about it. There isn't a unified uh, message. It's not that there's been a unified message uh, 
from the Republicans. I suspect really what's going to happen is that a lot of Republicans that were going to go on uh, news shows like Meet the Press or something like that, they'll cancel. They will cancel or they'll warn them up front that they're not going to talk about those issues. And if those issues are brought up, they will pivot and not answer it. And uh, they may not get pressured to answering it. So I think part of the reason why they can play Five of Swords is I don't think the media pushes hard enough on this. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm not trying to get y'all pissed off at, at, Meet the, at Meet the Press or, or any of the uh, TV shows that would uh, talk with these folks over here. I just... I don't think... I don't think that the media is going to push it hard enough. Okay. Um, once Congress is back in session, will they pass Ukraine? Well, will they shut the government down? Right? I keep seeing the budget passing, probably a thing that's, uh, uh, to keep the government funded, but they might want to shut the government down for a little bit just to put you know, keep this thing out of the news cycle and have people be more outraged. This is the, the, the tail wagging the dog, you know? Will there be a government shutdown as a way to further put off the Ukrainian funding issue for Putin? Two of Wands. They're thinking about it. They're talking about it. They're planning. They're in a planning stage. This is probably what they're talking about in the next couple of weeks here. Lover's card. My thing's upside down. Uh... The lover's card. Yeah, this, this is the agreements. This is the Republicans trying to get back on the same page. Uh, whether that's with Putin or not, you know, what they should be doing is uniting Republicans and Democrats coming up with a, uh, uh, a proposal that keeps the government open. Um, maybe they, may, again, maybe they agree to it and kick the can down the road for another six weeks or so. But they're talking about what they're what they're going to do next nine of wands they're worried about what they're going to face when they come back they've got another they've got this battle and another battle coming up i almost think that they're still going to agree to do it but let's see if we see anything that looks like a shutdown in the past we have the justice card um kind of the injustice of it you know taking off when you're supposed to be doing your job is a really, really bad look. <clears throat> and there's no there's no justification for it. Justice, you know. Oh, and of course then you've got uh, um you've got Donald Trump facing all the all these uh criminal cases too. And Donald Trump is basically controlling the GOP. So as these cases go against Trump, it impacts the um the decisions of the House GOP members. Not to mention, uh, some of them are probably under investigation too, but that's another reading. <sighs> Current situation, the King of Swords, Jack Smith. You know, Justice Card and Jack Smith, I think in some ways they're taking, they, part of this fleeing might be trying to figure out how much do they follow what Trump's telling them to do. I'm not necessarily getting what will happen with the government here. I'm, this is more. These are my political cards, my legal cards for Trump. Let's see where this is going. Eight of Cups, Three of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. Is this really talking to me about Trump? Is this talking about the budgets? If this is talking about the budgets, they're planning right now what they're going to do to land on their feet. They can't justify what they've done in the past, and it's time to make a decision. And there's this emotional walking away and planning for the future or waiting for information to come in regarding the budgets. Um, oh, this is going to be the overseas thing. This is going to be the Ukraine funding here. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> this card could be that they pass the funding. Or this card could be that we care so much about the budget that we're going to shut the government down because we don't want to deal with this. This clarifiers on the Queen of Pentacles. Knight of Wands, Knight of Coins, action, taking action about funding and compromise. Taking action, advancing funding, compromise. I'm not clear on this one. This makes it look like they're going to pass the budget. Likely they'll kick it. They'll kick it down the road a little bit more, and give them by themselves some time. Um. Okay, so let's take a look. Are they going to pass the? It's a, let's look at this from two ways. Um. <laughs> sorry about this. This is how I roll sometimes. They're talking about the budget. What's going to be the best for them? Because they're basically running out of excuses. It's time to make decisions on this budget. Do we shut the, or do we play hardball and shut the government down or not? And they're looking right now, at leaning at uh, shutting the government down, walking away from their responsibilities. This could also be walking away from Trump, but let's just do it as that. And why would they do that? Because they're getting information from overseas, from Putin, to do this. And they have to consider the budget. Now, if they're going to shut the government down, they're going to say, you know, this this doesn't make sense financially. We have to have a better plan. We just can't keep spending money the way we keep spending money. Now, if we look at this as we don't want to be seen walking away from our duties, shirking our duties, we've got elections to think of. So this is now the conservatives talking. In the, like, we need to make a decision. We can't just walk away from this. We've got responsibilities. This two-week vacation is stupid. People are looking at us. We've got re-elections coming up this year. We've got to do what's right for the country. What's right for the country? we got to pass this freaking budget. We've got to take action on Ukraine and funding for Israel. What are our values? You know, maybe they can talk down some of the funding for Ukraine or something along those lines, but they can't keep juggling. So maybe they approve another extension on the budget. But now they've got to start making decisions. And that one feels more right to me. And that's why you've got that nine of wands. It's you no know, one more battle or two battles to go and being battle weary. I think they will pass an extension to the budget. And then they're going to have to deal with the Ukraine thing. However, they end up dealing with that. I'll read on that one as we get closer. We've got apparently two weeks before uh, before the budgets are done. This is like the third budget reading I've done in four days. And, you know, it was a lot more stressful, I guess, in uh, October and, and uh, December when the budgets were coming due. And now it's almost like people are just, are they're tired of it. They're weary of it. It's just like, oh, here comes the drama again. They're not reacting as strongly. Uh, to this and this is how they wear you down you just it's hard to keep the outrage up isn't it as right wing media has found trying to find new and different ways to get their their base pissed off whether it's m&ms and go-go boots or uh or dr seuss books that nobody reads and, and having them removed or you know bud light you know the the list goes on Oh, God. I'd sum up this reading, but I've forgotten everything I've said, everything I've read on. Uh, the GOP are owned by Putin. They're answering to Putin and Trump. That's why they're doing weird stuff. They're covering for Putin. They're covering for Trump. And they're just a very compromised party at this point. And they don't do things that are in the best interest of the United States. They do it for what's in their best interest. And that's a divide between the far right and the conservatives. The conservatives would be with the Democrats on it. If this thing went, if the Ukraine funding uh, went to the House, it's going to pass 60-40 to 70-30, somewhere along those lines. It's going to be conservatives and Democrats, which make up about three quarters of the House ballpark versus the MAGA Republicans and maybe the ultra progressives. But even the progressives are probably, you know... Funding for Israel, which they don't want. Funding for Palestine, that they do want. What's which? Where do you want to position yourself? 
complicated times we live in. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this video and suffering through it with me. <laughs> thank you for your likes and shares and everything you do to help feed the YouTube algorithm uh, to get my video out to a wider audience, to folks just discovering this channel recently. Welcome. I hope you found this reading insightful. If you did, could you message me and let me know what I said? Because <laughs> I don't remember half the time. Um, again, I hope you found this reading insightful. I hope it answers some of your questions or gets you thinking things critically on uh, the issues that are going out there and maybe provides a little bit of enlightenment on it. Anyhow, thank you again for your support. I do appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.